Copyright applies to the following verbal and written content. With the exception of the content owner, complete content excerpts and links may be used for nonprofit purposes only, provided that full and clear credit is given to the following names wherein Diary Single Woman, Diary of a Single Woman, and Miss Anonymous. Appropriate and specific direction to the original content must be used. All rights are reserved. Hi, I'm Miss Anonymous with Diary of a Single Woman. I hope that you have been enjoying my true erotic stories from my diary. Yes, I do have a lot more true stories to share with you. But in the meantime, I have a proposition for you. Yes, a proposition. I want you to take a journey with me. Take a journey into a mysterious, taboo, and intriguing world of sensual fiction. A world that offers a place for you to escape from your normal daily life. A world that expands your mind beyond boundaries. Beyond boundaries you never knew you had. A world where you discover intimate thoughts and feelings you thought you were incapable of. A place where you can indulge in nail-biting stories. Oh yeah, this is going to be so damn good. I'm writing this lustful, adventurous novel just for you. I've named this series as a tribute to the breathtaking trilogy that had us all glued to our books and movie screens. Well, fasten your seatbelts, or should I say, unfasten your seatbelts, and get ready to live life on the edge. Welcome to Fifty Shades of Red. Chapter 9, Part 2 My eyes slowly open as I awaken from my nap, my head lying on Ethan's lap as he sits onto the large sectional couch in the entertainment room, his feet placed onto the floor and my feet are on the couch with my legs curled up, curled up and lost in Ethan's sweatpants, feeling the soft cotton hug my paradise and butt as I had no panties on his oversized t-shirt swallowing my upper body my breast lazily pressing on top of each other this is what Ethan came up with for me to wear since he ripped my dress and panties to shreds before making love well fucking me I would hardly say holding me down onto a chair, spreading my legs apart, and pounding my paradise hard enough to make my chair scoot across the room is making love. My paradise is so sore right now. I think he broke it. I exaggerate to myself. Ethan's flipping through the television channels, briefly stopping on each one until he gets to the business channel. The Dow had another day of significant increase, up 290 points since yesterday's close, the television spokesperson said with enthusiasm. I turned my head to look up at Ethan. How long have I been sleeping? Ethan glances down at his watch. Almost two hours. Wow, I must have been exhausted. I don't know why I did all the work, Ethan said. We both burst out in laughter. 
well, it wasn't like I was in a position to help with the workload, I replied jokingly. We both chuckled. Are you hungry? Ethan inquired. Actually, I am a little munchy. Munchy as in steak and shrimp munchy? Or munchy as in buffalo wings and dip munchy? Um... Buffalo wings and dip munchy. Ranch and blue cheese for my dip, please. Okay. Buffalo wings for two it is. Ethan presses a button on the remote control. A small square with Evelyn's face appears on the TV screen. Yes, Mr. Bowman, what can I get for you? Please make us some buffalo wings. We'll have ranch and blue cheese dressing. Oh, and two cold beers. Yes, right away, sir, Evelyn replied. Beer? I'm not a beer drinker, I said to Ethan. You can't have buffalo wings without beer. Ethan changes the television channel to the sports station. Oh, great, the sports channel. How considerate. Ooh, wait, these guys are pretty fit. (gasps) He just kicked him in the face yikes you like this ufc stuff i love it i have a black belt in jiu-jitsu wow that would explain ethan's muscular body and strength how long have you been a black belt for three and a half years i still practice jiu-jitsu it's another one of my outlets outlet from what well from life from professional life at my level of responsibility in my family business i oversee operations worldwide while maintaining lucrative partnerships with stakeholders don't get me wrong i love what i do my grandparents built this business from the ground up my parents uncles and aunts took the torch and worked just as hard even taking the family business to new heights now it's up to my siblings cousins and i to make sure the business continues to thrive for generations to come we are a family that likes to work hard and play hard look around All of this comes at a price. The limo, private jet, fine dining, VIP hotels, exotic vacations, and hot women. Hot women? I said while lifting my head up off of Ethan's lap. Yes, hot women. They are expensive to maintain. Are you seeing other women besides me? No, well, yes, I did, up until a few months before I met you. But the women became too jealous of each other, causing me to, well, tame and control them, probably more than they liked. Wait, you're telling me that the women knew about each other? I inquired while positioning myself so that my body was sitting upright. Yes, all four knew about each other. All four were my girlfriends at the same time. They knew their places. Well, it started off really well. Each one would accompany me to various events. Not all together, one at a time, of course. Events varied in style and themes. I would choose which girlfriend to bring with me depending on which one I thought was a good fit for the event. The girls would rotate in spending time with me here at my residence. It started off with each one taking turns, but then things got more interesting. Two would stay here at a time, then three at a time, Then eventually, all four girls would visit me here at the same time. The control part is what made it fun, 
for me at least, I had each one trained, and when they disobeyed, well, you know about the chamber. You would think that they would have learned me well enough to know what behaviors would warrant good things and what behaviors would warrant disciplinary actions, but over time, they became more disobedient than obedient. I don't know. I think they started getting attached to me, then jealousy crept in. They were being disciplined more and more. Then that's when, well, when, well, let's just say I had to let them all go. My face was stiff. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. I'm waiting for the punchline. I'm waiting to hear Ethan say he was only joking. Ethan picked up the remote control and started flipping through the television channels. Okay, so there is no punchline. Wait, you had four girlfriends? I hope you're not thinking of doing that with me. That is so selfish. One man with four girlfriends because he can? Because he's rich? How gross. Gross, no. Selfish? Well, that depends on how you look at it. Anyways, Kiva, I don't intend on doing that with you. The days of multiple girlfriends are over. As I've always told you, I only have eyes for you. I don't have multiple girlfriends anymore, but I do still have a thirst for control, although I've been working on quenching my thirst to a more tolerable level. You just need to read over the contract. I've already placed it in your handbag, and by the way, I've included my most recent lab results and medical exam. You and I will not have sex again until we both visit my doctor and get tested. That part is also in the contract. Speaking of your handbag, I've placed your red harness and fishnets in a closet in the red chamber. Once you sign the contract, we will move forward with our relationship. Oh, so really? If I don't sign it, then we will not see each other again? Yes, that's correct. Kiva, you have to sign the contract. You saw what happened today. I truly had no intention of having sex with you until you signed the contract. The way things played out, I couldn't hold back. After fucking you good and hard, I wanted to take you into my red chamber and spank you with one of my paddles. Spank me? But why? Because you are not allowed to command me, especially in the way that you did. That deserved a spanking. But you said that the GCTC game is not part of the contract. Oh, you're right. Well, you just need to sign the contract. Ethan leans over to me and continues. You should really enjoy this casual moment we are having. He then started tickling me. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> what, what are you doing? I said as I laughed uncontrollably. Ethan finally stops tickling me and says, I'm just trying to lighten up the mood. See, I'm not so bad after all. The entertainment room door opens and in walks Evelyn with steaming hot buffalo wings dip and two cold beers. She gets everything down onto the table in front of us. Is there anything else you need from me, sir? No, that's it, Evelyn. As always, this looks 
delicious. Ethan opens both of our beers. Then he picks up a buffalo wing. Eat up. Get it while it's hot. Ethan said with enthusiasm. Oddly, after learning this puzzling information about Ethan, somehow I've worked up an appetite after having aggressive sex and having to process Ethan having four girlfriends. Food is exactly what I needed. God knows I don't want to pass out. For all I know, I might wake up in a dungeon with Ethan hovering over me. I pick up a buffalo wing and dip it into the ranch dressing. Mmm, this is so good. Oh, come on. That was a foul. Ethan yells at the television as if the referee could hear him through the screen. As I continue to eat my buffalo wings and Ethan gulps down his beer, I can't help but think that this has to be a crazy dream. Am I dreaming? Ethan has revealed things about himself that I would have never thought of in a million years. The red chamber, multiple girlfriends, and now eating buffalo wings and drinking beer like he's an ordinary everyday type of guy. Well, I remember that was my first impression of him after meeting him for the very first time. Ethan was attending one of Elite Design's open house events. He was dressed very casually. He wasn't in a business suit, just a pair of stonewashed jeans and a light blue t-shirt with blue and white sneakers. Even though his midnight black hair, peculiar gray eyes and prominent gorgeous facial features made you stop in your tracks to admire him he seemed really down to earth and so easy to talk to i was dressed as usual very simple a navy blue dress black pumps hardly any makeup and my hair pulled back into a bun i don't even think i wore jewelry that day i was dressed very modest I wanted potential clients to notice my work and not focus their attention on me, per se. While I was standing in one of the showrooms talking with a potential client, Ethan casually walked over to listen in on what I was explaining. After giving my elevator speech of why Elite Designs would be a good fit for their lifestyles as it relates to decorating their homes, offices, and lavish events. The one potential client opted to take a portfolio packet and my business card home to discuss the venture with his wife. Ethan, on the other hand, wanted to hear more about what Elite Designs had to offer and he wanted to see more of my work. He was impressed with my skills and my thought for creativity. After an hour of just talking about decor, fabrics, and trending styles, he told me that he needed a lead designer like myself in his life. I wasn't quite sure if he was flirting with me or for real. Well, he invited me out for a bite to eat that evening so we could talk more about what he was looking for. Often, potential clients tend to accept our services once they're in their own comfortable environment. So, I accepted Ethan's invite and marked myself on the calendar as a scheduled external appointment with Mr. Ethan Bowman. This way, I was on the record and the staff knew who I was with as all open house attendees had to register for the event. Ethan suggested a mom and pop cafe that had out of this world homemade burgers and fries initially i thought burgers and fries how cheap but if that's what's comfortable for him then it works for me it turned out to be a deliciously fun experience sometimes those mom and pop restaurants have some of the best food on earth We hit it off really well, and needless to say, 
Ethan had just secured his personal interior designer and I had just secured a huge commission. I laugh at it now. I remember the next day when I returned to work, everyone was interested in how our off-site meeting went. When I told Megan that I was able to seal the deal over burgers and fries, she laughed harder than I expected. That's when she told me that Ethan Bowman was the senior executive to his family's billion dollar business and one of the most sought after bachelors in the city. When Megan told me that, I couldn't help but laugh just as hard. I couldn't believe that I had burgers and fries with such a wealthy man who was wearing stonewashed jeans and a t-shirt. That's how it all started. We started hanging out more, doing simple things like grabbing ice cream, walks in the park, movies, bowling, and window shopping. He never showed off his wealth or status to me other than his 911 Turbo Porsche. His simplicity and handsome looks had me hooked and I assume I was the perfect plain Jane candidate for him to groom into his dark world of weirdness. Mr. Bowman, Dominic is on line one, Evelyn said over the intercom. Thanks, Evelyn, Ethan replied. He stands up, cleans his fingers with a napkin, takes another gulp of his beer, and walks over to another area in the room. I continue to eat my buffalo wings. I don't see Ethan, but I can hear him clear as day. Hey, Nick, yes, I am coming tonight. Unfortunately, no, she hasn't signed the contract yet. I think it's safer not to expose her to anything else until she signs it. Safe for all of us. Right. I'm so glad we had a signed contract for that last incident. You do? You know what, bro? No, I will remain solo tonight. Thanks for offering. What? No, that's not the case. Of course, she's a lot of fun. I'm still taking a break from that way of doing things. Seeing how I like this new way. Yeah, you're right, I know. I'm not married, bro. Nothing is set in stone or a wedding band for that matter. Hey, Nick, let me uh finish up a few things so I can get ready for tonight. What? Yes, she's here. You know me too well, bro. I tell you about it. Yeah, when I see you. I will tell you all about it when I see you, bro. All right, later. Ethan walks back over to the couch. I continued eating, pretending like I hadn't heard anything. Did I miss any major plays from the game? Ethan inquired. Um, I'm not sure. I wasn't really watching, I replied. You weren't? Oh, so you must have been eavesdropping. So, you know about tonight? Yes, I know about tonight. And I know that your commitment to me isn't set in stone. Ethan sits down close to me, wraps his arm around me and says, That was just guy talk. Nothing is set in stone, but I assure you that I'm only seeing you. I meant what I said about changing some of my old habits. Not all, but some. Besides, after you sign that contract, you might be ready to get rid of me after a month. The contract is only good for one month. After that, we will revisit our arrangement and decide where things should go from there. Oh, one month? So the contract is not some 
type of permanent thing? No, it's not. And trust me, you will see why. I will see why? What does that mean? I guess I will find out once I read it. So you're going to another one of your freak show events tonight? Well, look at you, Miss I want to know, Miss I want to go. My face stiffens from embarrassment. Damn, how does he do that? It's like he can read my subconscious. No, I don't want to go to your freak show starring you, Dominic, and God knows what. Oh, now that's not being a good sport. Dominic can be a lot of fun. Ethan said in a devious, sarcastic voice. Ha, yeah, I bet. When you two get together, I bet there's nothing but trouble. Hmm, if I didn't know better, I would say you have a little crush on Dominic. Ethan grabs the buffalo wing from my hand and takes a bite. A crush? Yeah, right. This ends Chapter 9, Part 2. Tune in next week for Chapter 10, Part 1 to find out what happens next. Kiva reads the contract and learns more of what she's getting into. Will she sign or will she decline? On another note, is Ethan right? Does Kiva have a crush on Dominic? You might want to hold on to that thought. Let's see if Kiva signs the contract. You don't want to miss what's next. Here's a question for you. Have you ever had multiple relationships at one time? If not, have you considered it? I will be releasing an unscripted video for Chapter 9, Part 2 in the next few days. This is going to be so juicy. Yours truly, Miss Anonymous.